So now we are discussing the third section of this session, which is on how global climate change increases the incidences of environmental stresses. Climate change severely affects plant growth and physiological activities, various abiotic and biotic factors modified by environmental uh, conditions leads to abiotic stresses and that hamper plant physiological and metabolical activity, biomolecules, cellular structure, plants growth and which ultimately is going to affect the productivity. So we see here that due to more emission of greenhouse gases, climate is changing and extremes of temperature, seawater intrusion, UV radiation, high and low light intensity stress, xenobiotic compounds are being released more and irregular erratic rainfall. So these are some of the agroclimatic conditions which are going to cause many kinds of abiotic stress such as uh, stress because of ozone, more of ozone, stress because of chilling or freezing temperature, stress because of heat shock, salinity, nutrient deficiency, radiation or light stress, heavy metal stress, leaching, flooding, and scarcity of water or drought. Now, all these kinds of stresses, they cause various morphological and physiological impact on the plants, like increased leaf temperature and stomatal closure. It causes reduced seed germination. It causes loss of chlorophyll and reduced photosynthesis. It also causes DNA damage. Additionally, these stresses causes production of reactive oxygen species and oxidation of biomolecules, loss of membrane integrity, loss of target pressure, nutrient deprivation, and programmed cell death. A literature review of the impact of abiotic environmental stress, including climate related on crops was carried out by Wang and Fei. It considered only studies reporting data on the quality of harvested food products covering about 50 crops, including cereals, vegetables, fruits, and herbs. The analysis showed that in general, both positive and negative effects may occur. Depending on the stress, starch concentration, the feed value, lipids, physical or sensory traits tend to decrease. At the same time, protein and antioxidant concentration tend to increase, whereas no clear trend can be detected in sugar and mineral concentration. So increasing number of extreme climate related events occurring during 1990 to 2016 indicates more incidences of drought, flood, high temperature, storms, and the reason behind this more incidences of these uh, climate related events is mainly climate change. Now we will focus on few important abiotic stresses individually. Let us take first heat stress. So climate change causes uh, heat stress, which we have seen already because it causes extremes of change in temperature. So here I show you a heat stress plant which is sensing the leaves are getting yellow so what is happening during this heat stress so once plants faces high temperature oxidative it experiences oxidative stress this oxidative stress is basically because of the generation of reactive oxygen species in the cell which can cause disruption of membrane properties proteins enzymes and cellular homeostasis some of the plants are capable of uh, acclimatized to this particular situation of high temperature because they can activate certain factors like transcription factors, which can activate stress responsive genes. When they transcribe and translate themselves, activation of antioxidant enzymes, free radical scavengers, signaling molecules and osmoprotectants are going to be released which is going to cause reactive oxygen species detoxification, 
reactivation of proteins and enzymes, re-establishment of cellular homeostasis. And if a plant is able to perform this, it is going to uh, tolerate the heat. So there are uh, three different types of plants. If you consider uh, this heat stress tolerance, some plants are heat sensitive. Some plants are relatively more tolerant to resist, uh, to resist heat stress and other plants are highly resistant to uh, heat stress. So it depends on the uh, genetic constitution of the plant that whether it is able to, uh, it, whether it is able to tolerate heat stress or not. The plants which are sensitive to heat stress, they face several problems and there are major effects of high temperature on such plants. It can cause inhibition of seed germination. It can cause reduction of plant growth. It can cause improper development, alteration in photosynthesis, alteration in morphology or phenology, alteration in dry matter partitioning, it can also cause water loss from the cell. It will cause yield reduction, therefore, and reduction in crop quality. And oxidative stress is also being experienced by these plants. So what I mean to say over here is that we, uh, depending on the genetic constitution, uh, plants behave differently to heat stress. Like if you compare broccoli and maize, Broccoli uh, can survive between 5 to 25 degrees C, but maize has a higher range. It can take up up to 40 degrees C. That means maize is more tolerant towards heat stress, but broccoli is less tolerant. Similarly, we have seen that climate change causes change in precipitation pattern. So. If there is a change in precipitation pattern, it is going to cause uh, water, uh, it is going to cause water scarcity or flooding. So these are the two uh, factors which, which, is, uh, which might be faced by the plants. So uh, water use and efficiency and so climate change intensifies the magnitude of drought. And what happens during drought that plants faces uh, that they will have a reduction in seed germination, poor growth in vegetation, poor reproductive growth, reduction in leaf weight, reduced photosynthesis, reduced stomatal conductance, and a significant reduction in the total dry matter. So here uh, you see that one of the wild plant is growing under drought condition and it is not growing well uh, because uh, it is facing a lot of physiological and biochemical stresses. And below than that, I'll show you a rice plant which needs huge amount of water uh, to grow. Uh, and rice is a very important crop which is being uh, grown all over uh, the world. And in China, variation in rainfall have already led to water crisis and a severe decline in rice production. So climate change is predicted to increase the frequencies of droughts, floods, both of which will be pro problematic for food production. Recent strategies such as growth enhancements or increase in photosynthetic efficiency have the potential to increase intrinsic yields. Water deficits poses a serious threat to crop productivity and food security in many parts of the world due to poor or erratic rainfall and depletion of groundwater reserves. Improvements in crop productivity under conditions of limited water availability are vital to meet global food demand. Agriculture crop production requires substantial amount of water. For example, it has been calculated that 2,497 liters of water are required to produce one kg of rice. Therefore, the development of improved rice genotypes with increased water use efficiency is essential without compromising yields. So here are certain examples of major crop plants in which 
because of this uh, climate change, abiotic stress was faced by some of the crop species and a significant amount of yield loss was observed. As for example, if we uh, uh, take the case of maize, it experiences drought and heat and because of drought, 63 to 87% in the yield loss was observed and because of heat, 42% of yield loss was observed. In wheat, drought caused 57% of yield loss. In rice, heat caused 31% of yield loss and drought caused 53 to 92% of yield loss. Chickpea also experienced drought stress because of climate change and the amount of yield loss that it uh, shows is 45 to 69%. Soyabean because of drought, there was a yield loss in soyabean as well from 46 to 71%. And in sunflower, the, because of drought, the yield loss was 60%. In addition to uh, drought and heat stress, there is one more stress which is really important, though it will be faced by mainly by the plants which are grown in the coastal areas, and uh, that, that is salinity. Salinity stress is an important yield limiting factor that poses a significant threat to agriculture worldwide. Accumulation of salt in soil creates competition for nutrient uptake and transport. This leads to imbalance of the ionic composition of plant, thereby affecting plants' physiological traits. Salinity lowers soil water potential, causing cellular dehydration due to decrease in water uptake. Salinity induces oxidative stress due to imbalance in reactive oxygen species generation and the quenching activities of antioxidants. So here in this figure, it is being shown that a sorghum variety, when it is grown in sand culture and watered with a nutrient solution containing increasing concentration of sodium chloride, it can be very clearly shown that uh, the, the, the sorghum plant, which is being grown at higher sodium chloride concentration, it is not able to grow, it is senescing. So the growth is, uh, is highly reduced so uh, from this, we can easily conclude that salinity stress actually causing a mm, lot of effect on the sorghum plant's growth, and then it is going to affect its productivity as well. So uh, in nut cell, we can say that salinity causes cellular dehydration and osmotic stress, oxidative stress, iron imbalance, reduced biomass and low crop yield, altered expression of genes involved in nutrient and water uptake. And most importantly, it co causes stomatal uh, conductance of CO2 and intracellular CO2 concentration is then decreased, which is going to cause the decrease in photosynthesis. Now in the lower uh, right part of the slide, I'm showing you a plant which is called as suda. Now this is a, a, a halophyte which is able to grow in high saline condition and it grows even under uh, low amount of water that is even under drought conditions. So we need to know what is the mechanism that, the, the, uh, that this plant is adopting so that it is able to survive this salinity and drought stress together. So why uh, we should not also try to, you know, implement, first understand the mechanism that it is adopting and then implement those mechanism on crop plants as well, so that they also become climate resilient, resilient towards drought and resilient towards uh, salinity. So we need to explore the uh, already existing plants, their germplasm, we need to preserve, and uh, we need to further explore the new varieties that how they can be useful for us. Now uh, we are focusing on another kind of stress, which is biotic stresses. Now climate change, change intensifies the magnitude of biotic stresses as well. 
Biotic stresses in plants are mainly caused by weeds, insects, fungi, bacteria, virus, herbivores, which are insects mainly, and grazing by uh, some animals as well, and some other plants also can impact plants growth. So these are the main factors which will cause biotic stress in plants. So there is evidence that change in altering the distribution, incidence, and intensity of animal and plant pests and diseases, as well as invasive and alien species. The recent emergence in several regions of multivirulent aggressive strains of wheat yellow rust adapted to high temperature is a good indication of the risk associated with pathogen adaptation to climate change. These new aggressive strains have spread at unprecedented speed on five continents, resulting in epidemics in new cropping areas, previously not favorable for yellow rust, and where well adapted resistant varieties are not yet available. The wheat disease spot blotch is another example causing heavy losses in southern Brazil and many other countries, including Eastern India, due to a lack of resistance to the disease. So, uh, we see that it's not only abiotic stress, but biotic stresses are also going to be enhanced due to climate change. Then another thing which we must consider over here is global warming and climate change present plants with unique combinations of different abiotic and biotic stresses. So when, plants is grow, when a plant is growing in the natural environment, it is important to emphasize here that at one point of time, there's a possibility that the plant is going to face more than one stress simultaneously. And this is called as multifactorial stress. And we have much information on how plants acclimate to each of these individual stresses, but we have very little information about how they respond to a combination of many of these stress factors occurring together, which is called as multifactorial stress combination. Recent studies reveal that increasing the number of different co-occurring multifactorial stress factors causes a severe decline in plant growth and survival, as well as in the microbiome biodiversity that plants depend upon. This effect should severe as a dire warming to our society and prompt us to decisively act to reduce pollutants, fight global warming, and augment the tolerance of crops due to multifactorial stress combinations. We define multifactorial stress combination as a combination of three or more stresses together. So the example could be, say, for example, if a plant is facing drought and heat and salt together, heat, drought, salinity, and heat together, or drought, heat, and virus infection together. And this has actually been observed also. So this is uh, what is called as the multifactorial stress. And th uh, because these are occurring simultaneously, so plants are going to be affected definitely more and crop production is going to be really affected. So from this discussion, we conclude that Climate change enhances the frequency of occurrence of biotic, abiotic, and multifactorial stresses that causes alterations in physiological, biochemical, and metabolic equilibrium in the plant cells, leading to reduction in plant growth, and ultimately leading to reduction in agriculture production. <laughs>